What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten back at it again. I've got my husband here with me. Hello, husband. I don't want to be here. And we're here to talk about one of my favorite pastimes. What are you going to say? Yes. Uh, over sexual romance novels. <laughs> Anyway, the title of this uh, Internet Historian video is even fancier, Drinking. I love drinking. I like drinking tea. Yeah. I like drinking juice. Yeah. I like drinking soda. Right. I love beverages. Right. I'm super excited for this latest installment in Internet Historian's series. It's weird that he's jumped down this rabbit hole and like committed. I definitely didn't have think that he was going to finish with this. I thought he was going to get distracted halfway through and we'd yeah. be on like alien sightings in like no time. Hope you guys are doing well, staying safe and sanitized. Let's get started. Oh my God. All right, we've done theater. We've done painting. Oh. We've done. I thought that sound was somebody getting smacked. Ah, <laughs> Yeah. That's why I was like, oh my we have, God. We have one. I understand now. <laughs> my mind. We've yeah. done wine, and mm -hmm. now it's time to do some drinking stuff in general. I'm ready. And to start, let us learn about the drinking cultures of the world. Let's do it! Welcome to my private jet. Come on, kid. I got a lot to teach you about the world. I'm ready. <laughs> we must learn all of the drinking customs of all the funny foreign places. <laughs> Starting with bitch. where drinking was invented. The country of Uck. <laughs> okay, all right. The oh. trick is to jump oh. just before you hit the ground. <laughs> nice. Observe British people in their natural habitat. The Here bar. they do a thing called cheers, where they clink their glasses together before drinking. Do it. Clink the tradition it. dates back centuries, but the origin, why they started doing it, is somewhat unknown. <laughs> No one but knows. We have a couple of theories. Yeah, give me Theory yes. one. Poisoning. Yes. Oh. So imagine a situation like this. Two people who don't trust each other mm. sitting down together at the pub. Yeah. This guy then does something shady to the other guy's drink. Okay. Here you go. Did you poison my drink? <laughs> me? I would never. <laughs> well then, I'll pour a little of mine into yours, and you can pour a little of yours ah. into mine, and we'll both either be totally fine or both totally dead. No, no, there's there's no need to do that. So that was the initial version, and then eventually they just kind of shortcutted it to, yeah, clink, clink, clink it's clink. fine, I trust you. Got it. I mean, he would just bring an antidote and <laughs> just do it anyways. And they, <laughs> it's like just, the uh, uh, it's like in the Princess Bride when both of the things were poisoned, and he's like, ha ha, you know, joke's on you. I've been building up my resistance to this poison my whole life. Right. Yeah. Like, he would just <laughs> take a pill and then watch you and laugh. Ha ah, ha, you're, you're dead now. <laughs> it's in your blood. My husband has so much experience with poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> but that's probably... I mean, yeah. yeah so, be... theory number two. Ghosts. Oh. All right. Right, in the Middle Ages, people were worried about spooky ghosts and spirits. Mm -hmm. So they'd do cheers very loudly to scare oh. away the demons. Also, sometimes you'd spill some of your drink onto the table and the floor, and then that was like a little offering They're to gonna the just spirit. Lap it out. Off the floor? The but floor. that's probably also not okay. true. The most likely answer is simply that everyone likes that sound. <laughs> ah, very satisfying. Not the Bro, get away from her toes. Bro, he's, he's dropping hits right now. <laughs> he's a risk taker. He likes feet. His wife's out here like, stop snitching on yourself. Right. You know when someone drops a glass and everyone goes kind of silent, like, oh, you fucking idiot. <laughs> well, in the UK, right instead, everyone goes, way, in celebration. Oh, really? Anyway, hey, guys. Make fun of you, but also make you feel not so bad. Uh-oh. The BBC. They have a whole organization for that now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, he's dropping hints. We got to get out of here. We'll take my private cruise ship. Come, come to Italy, Japanese where they filmed the Mario movie. Let me just park this here. Yeah, thank God. Thank you. Bro. Chai, this is actually real. <laughs> come this way to the pizza. leaning tower of pizza. Held Shut up, up by the raw strength of a thousand tourists posing for photographs. But did you know that Italians, when they say cheers, say chin chin? What? 
Now, that is very funny to the Japanese because in <laughs> Japanese, chin chin means penis. I knew it! I was, was going to say it means cock, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Everything's phallic to these people. <laughs> Germany next. Now, here they do Frank. Bruderschaft, Dope. where you link your arms together oh, when drinking. Fun, yeah. It's also kind of seen all over the world at weddings in particular, but only the Germans have a name for it. It symbolizes the end of formalities between two people. But the Germans have a lot more. Now, when you clink glasses together with someone, mm -hmm. you have to look them directly in the eye. <laughs> and if you don't do it, you will be cursed with seven, seven years of years bad sex. Seven years is so much. Damn. That is so long. Apparently. It's not my fault. It's the German. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years of bad sex is definitely worse than seven years of just like straight up bad luck. Mm. You know? I would take seven years of bad sex over seven years of bad kissing. We're not getting into this discussion again. Are you sure? Okay, look. <laughs> I'm just saying. Look, okay. <laughs> this question is how you know if you're a real I was gonna say lover girl or lover boy, but like is this is question is how you know if you're a real lover, okay? It's not. Yes, it at is. All. Yes, it is. Not even a little listen, bit. Listen, okay. Would you rather right. only ever make out? Make out. No sex, only making out forever. Forever. Or would you rather have sex? Only sex, no kissing. Right. Sex without kissing is useless. What is the point? Listen, here. The point I illustrated makes it make sense. The inverse. If you flip it, it you would obviously choose the bad kissing over bad sex. A hundred percent of the time. You'd be like, oh, not be able to kiss well or have sex poorly. You'd be like, oh, well, obviously I'd kiss bad and have good sex. Okay, but... You're, so, now, you're, now you're shifting the goalposts. That's not what that phrase <laughs> means at all. The goal, we're on the same field, okay? Which means there are people, statistically, there are a lot of shitty kissers out there that that's would true. be good I've at sex. They, that, there's got to be a, a line there. Shitty kisser. But there's, there's hope there's, on the sex there's side. There's no way. There's no way you're bad at the most basic and lovely elements of sex. That you kissed a bad kisser. You know they're out there. Right. I've kissed a bad kisser. I've also kissed a smoker. That was the so if that you, was <laughs> so if you So if you do that, you know, boom, still would have sex. The condom is not gonna smell like smoke. <laughs> Okay? You know what I'm saying? No. You don't get cancer no. that way. Let us know in the comments below, kissing or sex? Don't worry, guys. We're still virgins. We're just, it's all <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> I've never had sex in my life. Then when doing shots in Germany, they sometimes also oh, go, Zermit, and you hold the glass near your belly. Zertit, <laughs> and you hold it near your chest. Okay. And then, Zum Sack, never, and you no, hold it near don't. your, you know? And then Zack Zack and you drink. Wow. Now, on to Finland. That's cool. They keep it casual. They have a custom specifically for drinking alone. You're supposed to do it while loafing like around alcoholic? in your underpants. And it's called Kalsari Kani. Nice. Also known as underwear drunk. Okay. All right, that's all I could find on Finland. So off <laughs> to Canada. Okay. To get there, I booked us a private fishing trawler. It's so exclusive that even these fish, yes, they go to a private school. <laughs> In Newfoundland, Canada, they have the Newfoundland Screech. <laughs> you take up. a shot of Screech, and then you do the Screech. It goes like this. Is you a Screecher? And then you answer like this. Deed I am, me old cock, and long me your big jib jaw. That's it. Well, I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> So many words, bro. But you know how you don't want to be a killjoy? <laughs> that should be. These motherfuckers. You know, you know that feeling like, these motherfuckers. What the hell? I did, all right, you old cock. God, take the drink. Fuck. A pirate culture. <laughs> then they take a big fish, pirate usually culture. a cod, and they kiss it all night. Oh, that's funny. I'm not doing that's that. That's pretty funny. Anyway, I'm kind of 
I'm kind of busy. So uh, there's no more customs anywhere in the world. You can do some more, maybe uh, independent research Ew. yourself. I'll, I'll see you back in the field. Please, stop. Please. Kiss me as passionately as internet historian kissed that fish. You know, you can't say, imagine a man kissing a fish and then touch me. <laughs> anywhere Come around here, those phrases. Do not touch me. Get off of me, woman. <laughs> okay, no, but seriously, kiss me. <sighs> it hurts. He's really not going to kiss me. It hurts. Guys. It's uncomfortable. I'm your wife. Yeah, I love you lots. I'm not a fish. Bro, <laughs> remember you did the fish face? You remember the fish face. <laughs> I don't do the fish face anymore. <laughs> Okay, this next section is on cocktails. Ha. So it all started when we made this asset where the Irish character, he's shaking a cocktail at a frat party. And I turned to the editor and I went, wait a minute, that's a weird word. Why cocktail. are they called cocktails? <laughs> and we started Googling it and we kind of went down a rabbit hole and it was actually really interesting. It's very understandable. So, here it is. Cocktails. In the 1700s, fuel prices were outrageous. Mm -hmm. So, everybody used the horse. Patent now, horses weren't just used for travel. They were also used for work in the fields. Mules are so cheaper. you would sometimes put a harness on a horse for plowing a field, right? Now, when you do that, its tail actually gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And so we have to do something about that thing. Okay. Think of it like the foreskin of the horse. Why you put would it I in think the guillotine about it like that? and everybody closes their eyes. Problem solved. Wait, does it hurt the horse to cut their tails? I mean, they don't, they probably wouldn't like it. They like to swish it. But does it hurt? I'm so distressed right now. Well, you, tails are things attached to the ends of animals. But I thought it was just, like I know on like certain, some animals, like the tails are like. What are you saying right <laughs> now? <laughs> I thought that the tails on horses we're just how do they hair. Move? Like a ponytail. It, you yeah. Know, you know how like a ponytail is connected at the base, but then it's just hair? That's what I thought it was yeah, on the horse. Yeah, that's mostly, yes, that's mostly true. Yes. But there is something in there. Well, I mean, yeah, so it has a tail. That's how it moves. I just didn't think about that. This is called docking. Yes, I've heard of docking. <laughs> I didn't know that's what it meant. It has a different meaning these days. Oh! Too fucking so once the tail is docked, some yeah. say it's much easier to clean, mm. but it also kind of looks like a chicken's tail, right? Mm. Hence, they would call these tails cocktails. cocktails. That makes sense. So that's step one in the story. Step two. Okay. You've also got horse merchants, right? And they are a very shrewd bunch. Mm -hmm. They know that when they sell their horses, the customer wants very feisty and energetic animals. Someone who's buying a horse doesn't want one that's kind of sickly oh or lazy or sleeping all the time. Which they right? do have personality. They need it for work. Yeah. So how do you ensure then that your horse looks full of beans and moxie and some other stuff Dude, your shit's and has really the funny. maximum horsepower possible when it's time to sell? Well, they would use this one quick hack. All the equestrians hate them. They would go over to their mortar and pestle and they would throw in some chili, hmm, some really? ginger, and a few other spices and just mix it all together. Then they would go over to the horse no. and ho hold Get still, little fella, the and with the mixture go here. up into the no no area. Wow! No, they didn't. Now, the horse doesn't like that very much, so it's <laughs> kicking, it's going mad, and the bidders are all going, wow, this is a really great horse. It's got some spunk, I tell you. I'm buying it. So the horse merchants made a whole bunch of money, and everyone was happy. Except the well, horses. Almost everyone. That's hideous. The end. Damn! Of step two. Oh, now okay. step three. Around the same time, you've got bartenders over in the saloon and they have just invented the science of mixology. Mm -hmm. They've realized that you can add Red Bull Red and Bull. lemon juice to stuff and actually make alcohol not taste so bad. Yeah. But when they added some ginger and spices and maybe a little bit of pepper, people went, oh, I know these. These are those horse suppositories. <laughs> Cocktails, we'll call them. 
<laughs> no, glug, 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 and the name no, they didn't. stuck. I don't think that's bro, true. Bro, I, bro, I refuse to believe that possible fact. Oh my god. I refuse, bro. That's crazy. I'm not gonna look it up either. I'm simply going to trust what internet historian tells me. I will though probably drunkenly be like, you're drinking horse ass and <laughs> not explain it. Do you think it's too early for ad time? I don't think no, it's too early it's for ad time. Oh no, help me, Incogni Man. I signed up for discounts at a retail store and they won't stop sending me messages. Wow. Yeah. Huh? I signed up to that website years ago. Why are they still spamming still. me? Still. <laughs> that would be my doing. I am data based man. <laughs> Who will stop him? <laughs> It's me, no. Incogni Man. Because we have Cogs. Incog Incogni yeah. is the brilliant service that tells a whole bunch of databases and people who have your data and stuff Stop. to get fucking lost. It says, hey, do you have this email address? Well, lose it. Hey, marketer man, you can't use this phone number anymore. Instead of chasing them all up manually by Stop signing up to Incogni, they send these legal requests on your behalf mm. to get you deleted from the internet. Let us do battle got crocs. in my room. And then we teleport to the desert. I better follow him. Incogni portal. Good of you to finally join us. Yeah, well, I'm going to stop you. Incogni lawyer powers, legal threats, <laughs> data removal tools, <laughs> consumer privacy act, data protection regulations, polite yet stern wording. I love it. It has created a Gundam. Nice! So go to incogni.com slash incognito. Like Sign up today and get 60% off an annual plan. I thought it was a Power Ranger. Yeah, they have those too, yeah. like the Mighty Morphs and stuff, but Gundams are cooler <laughs> and Asian. Speaking of Gundams, okay. I That's was... Okay, I thought you were saying. Uh -huh. I was at a freaking thrift store the other day. Or a secondhand uh -huh. store, not uh -huh. a thrift store. A secondhand store. And what? And I call my husband. And I'm like, hey, I'm at a secondhand store. What do you do you want any t-shirts? Yeah. And what did I say? My husband goes, Yeah, I want Gundam t-shirts. I want a Gundam t-shirt. I want t-shirts with these Gundams on I them. I want it. That's what Mind I want. you. I didn't say, hey, I'm at Box Lunch. Hey, I'm at Hot Topic. Hey, I'm at an anime store. I right. said, I'm at a secondhand store where people sell their belongings. Right. <laughs> Gundam t-shirts are not that uncommon. I see them everywhere. Surely someone's turned one in over the last three to no, five months. No, I just want to know. Do you want some generic tea? My husband, I want this, this specific she Gundam goes, from this specific season. She goes, maybe like a white shirt? <laughs> no. Do you want gangster Tweety Bird? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's way more specific, by the way, <laughs> of just a Gundam. <laughs> I think gangster Tweety want, Bird is a bit more ubiquitous than Tweety, fucking Gundam. I want Tweety Bird or Taz, but like from LA. <laughs> <laughs> I won't change numbers. I won't change email addresses. No, I really won't, though. I'll just simply take them back. <laughs> I can no. feel it working. My phone isn't ringing as often. My email inbox? I need that. It's less full. I need this. With uh, just a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> and then I like the sun. The clouds yeah. clear. Beautiful. My databases are getting too light. I'm floating. It's gonna float away. <laughs> He'll die of the cold eventually. <laughs> Pan up and it's an old man. He's like, not bad, kid. <laughs> not bad at all. <laughs> so go to incognito.com slash incognito. <laughs> Sign up today and get 60% off an annual plan. These ads are so good. Add over. Nice. Have you heard about the latest dangerous trend? It's all over social media. Wine dangerous. mixed with watermelon. A combination when mixed together makes a deadly poison. Here we are in Argentina with a delicious watermelon. Now let me chase it down with a glass of <gasps> wine. Wine. Okay, it's not true. Oh, okay. But it's been a myth in South America for over a hundred years. Really? That you can never pair wine and watermelon Why? together. 
Really? No one quite knows why. Okay. But we dug and we dug and we were able to find a single source from an author, Facundo de Genova. And he says in probably Argentina, probably sometime in the 1800s, mm -hmm. there was a small Catholic church and everything was great for a time. And then... They grew wine for dinner and watermelon for dessert until one day. Something bad happened in their idyllic little town. Shit. A few men in the village started getting a bit... Mm, grabby. It was a whole Me Too what? thing, but it was the first Me Too. It was a Me One. What? No one quite knows who did what to whom, but it was a no big scandal, way. I tell you. And it kept happening. Oh no, what's happening to our beautiful our village? They said in their funny foreign accents. Now, presiding over the village was a monastery. So the priests all gathered together at this monastery to figure out what the hell's going on with all this grabbiness. Mm. Yeah, this uh, town sucks now, said the women. <laughs> I hope you have uh, the plan to fix uh, this. Uh, yes, of course we do. But first, we must figure out why the men are becoming so grabby. Come on, guys, think outside the box. We have to find something, anything to blame except the people who actually did the thing. <laughs> so the priests began looking at the diets of the people in the village. Hmm, the priest said aloud. One of the monks proposed a theory. Okay. Have you noticed that we grow a lot of grapes here? Yes. And have you noticed that we also grow a lot of watermelon? Bro, he did it. Yeah. <laughs> he did well, it. Well, what if, you know, somehow <laughs> it makes the men folk grabby? That must be it. We must put a stop to this. Oh, God. But how? Well, let's tell them that if they drink wine and eat watermelon, they'll go to hell. Damn. Really? Okay. Damn. I thought he was going to say, oh, it'll make you sick. No. Yeah. Your soul is I damn. Thought they were going Why did with the you. the same, like, poisonous thing. <laughs> Why did you put I've my I've been ripping his head here? off since the start of the video. Oh I think my we should God. save his Why? life. <laughs> But also, I just want to know, I love, like, the filter that he put over it for this. Mm -hmm. Like, making it all, like, dark and dreary. Those are, like, little editing things that really just, like, are very satisfying. They tingle my brain. It's like the nice, like, a uh, fantasy filter. You yeah. Know, like old school drama. Yeah. yeah. it's nice. So that's what they did. Hear ye, hear ye, do not drink wine and then eat watermelon. You'll go to hell. Damn. Oh, really? Really? Oh, really? 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 And it worked. The assaults suddenly stopped. One. Hurrah. Although whether that was a coincidence, we don't actually know. Over time, however, the messaging kind of evolved. Mm. Because don't mix wine with watermelon isn't exactly a well-known Bible right, proverb. It's not in the Bible. And people became less religious. So instead of, you'll go to hell, the line changed to, it's poison oh. and <laughs> you'll die. Oh, and in Argentina, in some places, the myth still perpetuates. Okay. Is there actually any I'm evidence sorry, did that say it is an aphrodisiac that yeah. still cocktail? perpetuates? Yeah. It is an aphrodisiac cocktail. Well, let me go get some wine and watermelon real quick. Is there actually like any right evidence now, like this instant? that pairing Eleven. wine and watermelon together really causes the mood? This is that kind of bartender guy. Watermelon contains an amino acid, okay. arginine, really? which partially transforms into nitric oxide, and then nitric oxide is a vasodilator. Mm. Ah. And vasodilators uh, do this. <laughs> Plus, wine also has polyphenols, and that also helps in the formation of nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. So, double this. <laughs> Twice. But the effect from nitric oxide is actually very mild. Yeah. Also, all of these foods have polyphenols and arginine in them as well. All that happens when I drink wine is I get really sleepy. <laughs> yes, but like a sexy sleepy. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I drink, if I drink two glasses of wine, I'm going to bed. Right. And not in a sexy way. So pretty much everything has it. Mm -hmm. So, no. The effects are likely hugely overstated. Mm -hmm. So the moral of the story is... You bastard. <laughs> you bastard. This next section is on wine in the Bible. Okay. Sort of. Apologies if we got any details wrong. We mostly kept this section because we liked the pun on Eucharist. Huh. Jumping forward to Jesus. This right. 
is his first recorded miracle. Okay. So yeah, the water Jesus and a whole bunch of his followers and stuff, yeah. they are invited to a wedding in Cana. Now, the waiter goes over to serve some guests some wine and, uh-oh. It's empty. <laughs> what do you mean it's empty? There's no more wine. No, wait, I've got a plan, <laughs> says Jesus. Bring me six big stone jugs, Spoilers. about 20 to 30 gallons each, and fill them up to the brim with H2O. Mm -hmm. Now, check out this. And he does the finger thing. <laughs> and then when they went to pour the water, it suddenly it was wine. Mm -hmm. And it was the best wine that anyone had ever had. And they go, oh, that's pretty good, Jesus. But have you got any other miracles? And he that would make me so salty. Like, imagine, like, I, as a host, I already feel bad. Yeah. Because I didn't bring enough wine. Right. My B. Right. And apparently I can't just run down to the store, right? Not only do you show up and bring all these people so I didn't have enough wine, but then your wine is better than my wine? Yeah, but then you get to be the guy that hosted the famous Jesus party. I guess. You know what I'm saying? And he says, yes, come on, we're going to do a supper. Now, everyone is gathered around, <laughs> and this is the point at which Jesus reveals, by the way, That's one of you that. is very sus. Hmm. I know hmm. one of you will betray me. And he looks at Judas, and Judas is kind of looking away. <laughs> but then Da Vinci's like, guys, uh, I need you to stay uh, still for the painting. So Jesus goes, watch this. And he takes some bread and wine and he says, look at this bread. This Winter is my flesh. Bread. And everyone's kind of like, really? And he goes, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you're Protestant, then just metaphorically. No, no, okay, look at this wine. It is my blood. Really? Quit making this so complicated. Here, have some. So he hands it to his disciples and they went fantastic. I was fresh and thirsty. And he goes, yes, in fact, I shall call this little celebration a Eucharist, mm -hmm. or Holy Communion. It will be the practice of eating one cracker <laughs> or piece of bread and Waker. drinking some wine. Mm -hmm. And if you eat the whole thing and drink the whole bottle, that's called a huge caress. <laughs> now, most Christmas today... <laughs> that's a good one. Is that the that's pun? that kept this section yeah. in the video. That's the pun? That's funny. <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's the pun. Do not attempt. Now, most Christmas today take that as a symbolic thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unless uh, you are Catholic. Uh, now, they believe in what's called transubstantiation, mm. which means that the bread and wine literally turns into the body and blood of Jesus yeah. at the moment that they are consumed. Right. However, it does still look like bread and wine, and they it, call that yeah. phenomenon appearance mm. or accident. Mm. It has changed, but you just can't tell, mm -hmm. except for sometimes when you actually can. Lanciano, Italy, in the horrifying. 8th century. Yeah. There is a monk, and he has been on r slash atheism <laughs> for far <laughs> too long. He is starting to have doubts about the blood and wine stuff, but he still has his monkly responsibilities. So, he holds mass, and he says the words of consecration, this is my body, this is my blood, this is my rifle, this is my gun, <laughs> and at that very moment, the bread turns into literal flesh in his hands. And then he eats And it. the wine turned to blood. Jesus, man. Holy shit, said everybody in unison. And ironically, he went, oh, well, I should probably not eat this then. No. So instead, he kept it in this chalice thing. Uh -huh. What is it? Huh. A clock? Anyway, there it remains still today, kept in the church of San Francesco. What a and now, weird a couple of years thing. later, in the 1970s, Professor Odaro no, Leone decides, didn't. let me do a bit of an experiment. No, he so he took a sample of the flesh, and he came to the conclusion that it was indeed real. Apparently, it was part of a heart valve, and that the oh. blood type was A, B. Oh, no. The sample has not been analyzed since. However, okay. it is officially recognized by the Roman Catholic Church. As Here he... ends the reading. He took somebody's heart and put it in a glass bottle? Why? <laughs> what? Why would... Why wouldn't you choose, like, toe or something? <laughs> the heart? The heart, bro. Bro, he took somebody's heart out their body He that? killed somebody. No, it's like you went to the corner and got like a heart or something. Like he fucking... 
Now you might say, well, that section really doesn't have a whole lot to do with wine. It has something and in fact, to do you're with just it. badly retelling a Bible story. <laughs> 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 this final section we started making for the main channel when we found this massive court document and we thought, holy shit, this is a hell of a story. And we had all these ideas that would be like words. Witcher themed. And so there were quite a few like random Witcher assets, just ignore that. Mm. But it just kept blooming and blooming into this bigger story and it got too long. Okay. And so here it is on Incognito. Sure. And here we begin in 1740. All right. The birth of Thomas Jefferson. Push, Mrs. Jefferson, push. Now, Tom Jeff. Yeah. He was involved with some politics. <laughs> yeah. Kind of sexy, but you're too late, he's dead. But what's more important okay. is he tried his hand at a lot of different hobbies. Architecture. Mm -hmm. He designed his own home in Monticello. He played the violin. He kept mockingbirds. He collected fossils. <laughs> and, most relevant of all, he hoarded a culture. In his extensive garden, he kept 330 types of vegetables and 170 types of fruit. That's too much. One of those fruits was grapes. Okay. So he tried his hand at viniculture. And while he was good at a lot of things, he never saw much success with making wine. Uh, so yeah. he mostly collected the stuff. Now, people naturally wondered, like, hey, what happened to the wine he made right, well, and the wine he collected? So he drank it? Did he sell it all? Mm. Did he give it away? Did he attempt the huge caress? <laughs> Fast forward, 1985. Oh. Meet German music producer Hardy Rodenstein. Oh, he is an avid wine. wine collector. And he's tapping on the walls of old buildings in Paris, looking for some national treasures. On this That's occasion, the wall the opened and, my God. Wow. Sealed behind, he said that he found a collection of 24 no bottles. No way. I have dating definitely all the way back. heard of this. No I way. I have definitely heard of this. Back to the 1780s. Yeah. And oh, look at that. THJ engraved right there on the glass. Thomas <laughs> Jefferson. <laughs> it seems like Mr. Rodenstock has stumbled upon Jeff's hidden collection. Interesting. Mystery solved. Or was it? And it would make sense that they wound up in right. France because Jefferson spent a number of years yeah, over, there. Loved it over there. Amazing. And into Rodenstock's wine collection. They went. That's crazy. Now, Rodenstock's wine collection them? was something quite special, and he liked to show it off. So every year he would host tasting events wow. that featured extremely rare wine. Drank it? And he would invite all the most prominent German celebrities, you demon. such as the Hans brothers, and Das Boot. <laughs> They're all made up. And Death Stranding. Mm. Now, one of his guests was a guy named Michael Broadbent, the senior director for Christie's Auction House. Okay. Together, they cracked open one of the THJ bottles. Bottle number one. Broadbent said that the wine was delicious. Yup, these bottles are in perfect condition, he said. Mm -hmm. You should really auction these things. I run an auction, you should put them in there. Okay. Huh. Maybe I should, said Mr. Rodenstock. Maybe I should. But before they did that, they sold two of the bottles privately. Okay. Number two and number three. Got it. And they drank a fourth. Damn. On the 5th of December, 1985, they put up bottle number five for auction at Christie's. Uh -huh. It was bought by Christopher Forbes for £105,000. Damn. damn. Which, at the time, meant it was the most expensive bottle of wine ever sold. Wow. But that wine wasn't to drink. Proudly, that thing sat on the Forbes shelf, mm -hmm. eventually to be put into the Forbes gallery in the exhibit on former presidents. Wow. And funnily enough, they actually put this bottle on display under a big industrial light <gasps> and it heated the thing something fierce. And the heat ruined its drinkability, of course. Yeah. In fact, wow! so intense was the light that the glass expanded and the cork fell into the bottle. Damn. Some time passed. Wow. They celebrated the sale with another drink. Bottle number six. Stop! Now huh. And then they sold two more privately. And then they drank In another one? In 1987, they drank bottle number what nine. Is happening? 1988, they drank bottle number ten. Damn. And at this point, a new challenger enters the sea. The White Wolf <laughs> of Palm Beach. It's so weird. They call him Bill Coke. Some say it's short for billionaire. Mm. Ah. He's a member of one of the wealthiest mm -hmm. families oh, in America. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And he is also one of the world's most avid collectors of wine. So, they sell him a total of four bottles for $311,804. Oh, yeah. 
We're way over here on the graph at this point. Yeah. So, gently, careful, careful now. He put them in his climate-controlled cellar. He kind of got a deal on those, didn't he? Well, this has been a lot of time, though, that passed from the first selling. Yeah, but I'm just saying the first one sold, like, one. One sold for 105 He got four for 311 That He got a two for one. <laughs> he got buy one, get one. And he would show them off to his friends. Like maybe he doesn't Otherwise, feel like that. Otherwise, here they remained for the next 17 years. Very cool. As the years ticked by, more bottles were sold and more bottles were consumed mm -hmm. until there were none left. 2005. The four Coke bottles had sat around for a long time on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Doing nothing. Right. When something new happened. The Boston Museum of Fine Arts was interested in displaying the bottles mm -hmm. and wanted to trace the exact provenance. Mm -hmm. So Coke gets on the line with the Jefferson Foundation and he goes, oh, look, I don't mean to brag, but I'm about to have my bottles displayed at the Boston Museum. But I need just a little bit of verification. Could you tell me exactly where these bottles come from? And the Thomas Jefferson Foundation responded, oh, I'm afraid we can't do that. We don't think they're real. <gasps> Damn! Yeah. In fact, you're not the only person to call about this. What? <laughs> yes, it was in the 80s. A Mr. Broadbent, I believe, of Christie's Auction House called up trying to verify the bottles so that he could sell them. But we looked through our comprehensive historical records and found no mention of these bottles. What? Here's a letter we sent saying that we couldn't verify them. And they're probably fake. But, 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 he sold those bottles to me. Yeah, what? Now, back to 1776. Okay. Now, here's a thing you should know about Jefferson. Let's just say if he was around today, he would play a lot of Factorio. <laughs> he was, you know. And I have the largest collection of Funko Pops <laughs> in the world. And that meant that his record keeping was very meticulous. Yeah. All of his anime was ordered alphabetically. Right. And so too were all the things that he ever purchased. He has it like from start to finish. Like in these ones, when the girls blow up, only the bottom half of their shirts come off. But if you go to the far right, it's the whole skirt and caboodle. So you can pick at any level, at any level you like. My love. Including wine. So that's my story, hey. Mr. Pepsi. And those bottles are probably fake. What? When Coke hears about this, he hangs up the phone and hits speed dial on his pager or something, <laughs> and he, I need to assemble a team, a team of investigators. Mr. Rodenstock lived in Germany. Okay. So, Coke's investigators scoured the countryside for clues, mm -hmm. and eventually they found a lead. They managed to track down five German residents who claimed to have done engraving work for Rodenstock in the past. Wow. They said, hey, have you seen these bottles before? And they went, oh, yeah, yeah we have. Yeah. We did those. And all five were certain that the THJ engravings were done by an electric power tool. Wow. Every one of these 24 bottles of Jefferson wine were fake. Oh. Big, fat phonies. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. So... Bill takes all of this evidence to court, and Rodenstock is summoned, but he doesn't show up. So Bill wins in absentia and is awarded a million bucks. Okay, Damn. You have to in find the end, the guy. Bill never received any money from Rodenstock. But to Bill, it was about sending a message more than receiving any money. I'm coming after you. Rodenstock never spoke much on the issue in public, but one time he did offer, what's the big deal about wine fraud? Jesus! Did it! He's mad guilty. Sir. You just compared yourself to Jesus! That's, that's mad guilty. Guilty as hell. That's hella guilty. Oh my god. Damn, second coming, ain't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just one battle of many that Bill has fought against counterfeit wine. Mm -hmm. In 2008. That's just that I plan to put people in jail. <laughs> that's what the hell I'm talking about. One battle of many that Bill has fought against counterfeit wine. In 2008, Coke filed a consumer fraud lawsuit against the Chicago Wine Company. Damn, what they do? Which was later settled out of court. Another time, Coke spent $3.5 million buying nearly 2,700 bottles of wine from Zaki's auction uh -huh. house. Almost a third of a million dollars worth Oof. was fake. <gasps> the auction house settled what? out of court, but what? the seller 
was told to pay three hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars in damages and another thousand dollars for every ball. But then the next day they went, you know what? We thought about it. This jury has decided to award you twelve million dollars in punitive damages. Jackpot, said Mr. Coke. I'm rich. But a year later, the court changed its mind and awarded Coke only seven hundred and eleven thousand dollars. Okay, this so this guy's like a one-man army, and he's going around Scorn. trying to scare the shit out of anyone who's selling fake wine. Right. Oh, you've got expensive rare wine, do you? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'll buy it then. Yeah, but no. Yeah, I'll buy it. No, it's fine. It's genuine, is it? Yeah, you're saying it's genuine. Yeah, definitely. And then he goes and he inspects it, then finds it's fake, and then goes, "Yeah, I knew all along, stupid." Lawsuit. <laughs> By doing this, Lots he's very people. slowly cleaning up the market. After all of these investigations, Bill has spent around thirty-five million dollars wow. tracking down fake wine. Oh, he's <laughs> now you know you was asking for your your millionaire for just this is what it looks like. He ain't making no money from this shit. I was gonna say, I was gonna say get a hobby, but he yeah, he did. That's the hobby. <laughs> this is this hobby. He's got a team. They can't wait for him to call, bro. They the out. They the fraud detectors. Oh my god! That's funny as hell. That is. This is actually so that is, fascinating. That is some rich people shit. That's what I'm talking about. Sixteen. Coke was ready to lay down his weapons. Mm -hmm. He sold off a big chunk of his collection, and it sold for twenty-two million dollars. Wow. Which means he likely did not break even. Okay, yeah. you guys can't see this. But my husband is refusing to hold my hand under the desk. I'm a man of principle. Yeah. Doesn't matter, don't ask me what principles, <laughs> but I'm standing by him. <laughs> Just hold my hand. I will not. You he's cannot like, make me. He's like dipping his hand, <laughs> in, like weeping. Like... You'll never catch me alive. I wish you guys could see this. <laughs> Somebody is there is like, oh, they're doing something dirty under the desk. No, oh, I'm that... being rejected over and over again. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. They don't have to know that. No, they need to know the kind of emotional turmoil you put me through. So consider giving to his GoFundMe. <laughs> now, this is actually just a very small part of the story. Mm -hmm. This scandal ended up making such waves across yeah. the wine industry that they decided to make a movie about it. What? Based on the Benjamin Wallace book, The Billionaire's Vinegar. Oh. And it was set to star Brad Pitt. What? No, wait. Now it's Matthew McConaughey. Mm. No, wait. It looks like it's cancelled. Oh. End. All right, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Four more okay. to go, but we've already started in on the regular type stuff in case you don't love fancy. Okay, bye. That was good. I almost forgot this incognito channel. That was really fun. I had <sighs> a really good time with that. I missed this guy. Glad he decided <laughs> to come back. All right, what'd you think about it? I had a really good time. Internet historian is so funny to me because he's just like me for real. Yeah. Like he gets started on one topic and then just falls down a fucking mm -hmm. hole he with down no ladder. Fearlessly. <laughs> just like face first. He's like, we'll figure out how to get out later. Have you seen what the fuck is down here? Dude, like... we've gone on so many weird journeys with this guy's channel, but yeah. I've, I've enjoyed all of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I really enjoyed this. The huge Christ is. <laughs> he's become. He's gonna become a wino. It's so like, funny. But he's gonna become a wino, dude. Yeah. Yeah, because like all these memes and stuff he's making about it, like he's in deep. Yeah. He's yeah. Gonna, you're gonna. He's gonna start drinking wine and really mean like. He's gonna. I, I can taste it. I can taste the vintage. Mm -hmm. Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining us on this journey. Husband, thank you so much for being here, even oh, though you refused right. to show me any kind of affection. I've been showing you Tom <laughs> to the back rub, the comforting back rub. It's oh, okay, yeah? Bud. Why won't you kiss me? Listen, there was a lot going on, and there's a lot of <laughs> swirl of emotions. Here, I'll kiss you. Come here. I'll kiss you. Are you going to kiss me or lick me? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to kiss you. Come here. See? Come here. What's the problem? I don't want you to lick me. <laughs> Will you let me kiss you, please? I am. I'm just looking. <laughs> I can feel you staring at me. Stop it. Close your eyes. Thank you. <laughs> Her eyes just like open like... Because <laughs> he does this thing where he'll pretend to kiss me, but then he licks me and it's gross. It's not gross. Nothing gross. 
about it. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations <laughs> down in the comments below. We got Daily Dose. We got fucking uh, Maxor. We got all kinds of shit. CJ so, the Champ. CJ the Champ. Olu Mulo. Go yeah. check out our channels, dude. We have so much content for you to enjoy. You guys, keep demanding more somehow. <laughs> That's I true, mean, yeah. never ending. But anyways, other than that, peace out, Hobus Gets. It's skittin' lit.